Feinstein's family. Catherine here again. I want you to think back to the last time you had a big breakthrough, a big win, and everything finally clicked. It was fantastic. You had your first million dollar year in revenue as a Fast Signs franchisee. You reached your weight loss goal. The big check arrived in the mail. The concert reached its crescendo and everyone in the audience rose to applaud your breathtaking performance. The big game you played in was won. Those moments are beautiful, they're amazing, they fill our souls with excitement. But the problem is when our focus is totally on the big wins and we overlook the little one step at a time, we're making a little bit of progress every day, we lose sight of the fact that it's the little wins that lead to the big wins. It's important that we savor the little wins that's making progress, because that's gonna lead to those big, big wins. So yeah, the micro successes have the potential to be as impactful as the big breakthroughs do. For example, you open a fast signs, you want to build a profitable million dollar a year fast signs locations. That's a great big goal. But there are a lot of celebratable smaller goals along the way. As an example, if you just opened your fast signs, it would be your first sale. If you've been in business a couple years, it would be your first $50,000 a year month. It could be landing that big repeat customer and it can even be the fact that you get to be in your business that you own each and every day. But the big goal needs to be broken down into little goals and we need to celebrate those little successes. Research by Harvard professor Teresa Amabile has shown that actually tracking these small and incremental wins actually does wonders to build our self-confidence and give us the strength to continue moving forward. The little wins celebrated lead to big wins. This is because every achievement, big or small, activates our brain's reward circuitry. The pathways open up and we get the deeply satisfying release of dopamine, which leaves us feeling energized, confident, and motivated. So small wins can be even more important than the big ones. And there are two reasons why. The first is without the small wins, the big ones likely aren't going to happen. We give up in disappointment and frustration before we get the big win. The small wins hold the key to the momentum. They infuse us with motivation and keep us going. The second reason is the big magical moments that we like to savor happen infrequently. Those big breakthrough moments that completely take our breath away, there are only a few of those in any one lifetime which is partly why we enjoy them so much. But the small wins are more frequent and what they lack in size, they can make up for in numbers. We often underrate the little wins, the micro victories, often to our own detriment. We set our sights so firmly on the finish line that we refuse to acknowledge and savor the little wins that got us to the finish line. Acknowledging the small wins a little more in our lives is key. In fact, we have to do more than acknowledge them. We have to actually celebrate the little wins. They hold the key to our eventual big breakthrough because of what they do to our motivation and our self-confidence. Small wins are reflected in how we set our goals. So let's say you set a goal in January to lose 60 pounds by the end of the year. That's all well and good, and you may very well reach that goal, and that is fantastic. The only problem is you may have sacrificed the chance to invoke the power of all the small wins along the way. If you set the goal instead to lose five pounds a month, you have 12 opportunities to celebrate, still getting to that big goal of losing 60 pounds in a year. But every month as you hit that five pound weight loss goal, you celebrate, you get that feeling, that hit of dopamine, you get that motivation, that recommitment, and that's gonna help you get all the way to the 60 pound weight loss. You now have 12 chances to get those neurotransmitters firing to get the big win. 
And it applies to lots of other things too. What you need to do is ask yourself the question, how do I break my big goal down into a lot of little celebratable milestones? How can I design my goal so that I get flickers of light through the passage of the tunnel rather than only seeing the one big light at the end of the tunnel? And you can make it even better by calling it a win when you follow your system. The system versus goal model was popularized by Scott Adams in his book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. He wrote, if you do something every day, it is a system. If you're waiting to achieve it someday in the future, it's a goal. So try having a system instead of a goal. The system versus goal model can be applied to almost anything. In the world of dieting, losing 20 pounds is a goal, but eating right every day is a system. In the exercise realm, running a marathon in under four hours is a goal, but exercising daily is a system. In business, making a million dollars is a goal, but making 15 proactive outside sales calls every day is a system. The strategy is to define the action steps that if followed will inevitably lead to your big goal and then you focus on those action steps. If your goal is to be a published author, the action step may be write 500 words every day. So by doing this, you create small wins and each one of those small wins you celebrate, really allowing yourself to soak it in just by sticking to your system, you're having a win. Do this rather than waiting for the big outcome at the end. The system will help you get to that big outcome, but all those wins and celebrations along the way will keep you motivated. These small wins are all around us if we stop overlooking them. If you make small incremental progress, maybe you made that sales call, you wrote that story, you submitted a job application, you're on the way to achieving your eventual goal. These are all opportunities for celebratable small wins. The main problem is we sometimes set our sights too high when starting out of the gate. We start on a goal and set the bar for short-term progress so high, so often, that we can't be delighted in our baby steps. The culprit here is often our inability to understand how progress happens. The key lesson is to create as many opportunities for small wins as you can by redefining wins as incremental progress or as sticking to the system rather than pinning it only on the eventual outcome. So sticking to your system is the win, whether you reach the eventual goal today or tomorrow. It doesn't really negate the fact that it's a win. Let's get back to Professor Teresa Annabile. She analyzed more than 12,000 diary or journal entries of over 200 white and blue collar employees at some companies. She wanted to find out what was the most important driver of motivation and positive satisfaction at work. And the finding surprised her. It wasn't recognition as she expected. It wasn't incentives, which she also expected. And it wasn't interpersonal support. It was whether the employees felt like they were moving forward, like they were making progress. It's all about little incremental progress and that made these employees feel motivated and excited and positive. So making progress has the most prominent positive effect on our motivation. Professor Annabelle wrote, some of the progress that people made seemed almost trivial to us on the outside, even mundane, but it ended up having such a big impact on their pride and their confidence and their emotions and their intrinsic motivation. These small wins matter because they are so much more likely to occur compared to the big, big breakthroughs in the world. If we only wait for the big wins, we could be waiting a really long time and we probably might quit along the way before we see anything tangible come to fruition. So what we need instead of the big wins is simply forward momentum and celebrating all of those small wins along the way. It's hard as humans to keep going without a sense that we're making progress. We lose the will to act when we can't sense forward movement. 
This is why we should pay more attention to the small wins, the little glimmers of progress. When you encourage and point out micro progress in yourself and in others, motivation is restored, confidence surges, and with it a higher likelihood of achieving more success in the future. The key is to set the bar for progress low enough so when starting out, you can be thrilled with baby steps because frustration will dog your every step if your short-term expectations are too high. It's hard to stop someone who can see almost everything as progress and see progress in almost everything. Small wins have big, big power and we can get them almost every day. All we need to do is stop overlooking them start setting goals and creating the systems to achieve our goals and start noticing the small wins and celebrating them. Each of us can start celebrating these baby steps and allow them to drive us forward because there is big, big power in small wins. Use this for yourself, use this for your kids, use this for your team. Thank you.